A very good afternoon and welcome to all of you for the third episode of Learning Live. I am Ankit Chaudhary and this is the third episode of Learning Live. Here we try to learn some tricks and trades of some very interested, talented professionals in the industry. Last week we learned the basics of filmmaking and sound engineering. And we would like to thank you for the amazing response that we received on the same. Today, I'm a little extra excited because today we are doing my favorite topic, photography. We all love getting clicked. We love getting clicked with pictures. We love clicking pictures. I'm personally a fan of clicking scenic outings, sun, light, fire, etc. Today, we have an expert with us to help us do our basic photography much better. To shift from that auto mode on the cameras and try to click pictures in a different setting altogether. We have with us today Ms. Amruta Karnik. Amruta Karnik is a food and lifestyle photographer based in Mumbai, India. She gained her master's in commercial photography from Shari Academy in Mumbai after having studied applied art specializing in photography. Amruta has studied advanced food photography in Pittsburgh, USA and has explored several photographic fields while traveling the world and experiencing all that life has to offer. Her love for food and culinary arts brought her to specialize in food photography and styling. She hails from a background that extends from graphic arts to photography, which provides her an exceptional eye for the graphic detail and impact. Passion drives her, creativity motivates her. She has worked with acclaimed brands like Tata Fabsta, Mad Over Donuts, Tata NX, Tata Steel, Parley, Wood Hall, Big Bazaar, Brew, Sanchuros. Cambay Tiger, Reliance, Alcom Laboratories, Analtec Laboratories, Quality Hin Hotels, and Birdie's Cake Shop, to name a few of the brands. She has applied art in photography from LS Raheja School of Art in Mumbai, Master Craftsman in Commercial Photography and Digital Imaging from Shari Academy, Mumbai. She also holds a degree in Advanced Food Photography from Pittsburgh, USA, Baking and Confectionery from IHM, Mumbai. She was awarded Master Craftsman Photographer of the Year and Top Gun Photographer of the Year in 2008 at Luxoculus Photography Exhibition, International Food Photo Award from Photography in 2016, winner of Food co Category in, at Konica Minolta, Picturesque Photography Awards organized by Better Photography Magazine in 2017, Honorable Mention for Food Photography at 11th Annual Color Awards 2018 USA, Nomination for Advertising Photography at 12th Annual Color Awards 2019 USA. Well, with all of that, I'm sure today's session is going to be very interesting and full of amazing learnings for all of us. Let's welcome Amruta Karnik with us. Hi, Amruta. Hi, very good afternoon. Very good afternoon. How are you? I am good. How are you doing today? And how is the lockdown treating you? That's my question to everyone. All good, all good. Just trying to keep everybody busy, I think. Great, great, great. So uh, a quick synopsis of what we are going to learn today from you, some pointers that we are looking forward to. Yes, so I think uh, most of us have the SLR cameras and everything. Like, I get a lot of DMs on Instagram that I do have an SLR. And uh, at times I meet people and uh, they say, I uh, do have an SLR, but I don't know how to shoot on a manual mode. So today that's what I'm going to help you with. Uh, we'll uh, look into the small aspects like uh, uh, learning the apertures, the ISOs, um, uh, which lenses to use uh, when you're shooting landscape, which lens to use while you're, using, uh, while you're uh, shooting portraits. And uh, yeah, a little about image processing I'll help, help you out with. Great. So I think that's definitely a huge learning for me because I have been owning a DSLR for quite some time and I do not know how to go beyond the auto mode. Okay. So uh, I hope I'm going to move out of the auto mode after today. And I hope the same for all our viewers. I leave the screen with you and the viewers and I'll move out. So it's all you. Okay. Thank you, Ankit. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's staying safe inside their homes. And uh, thank you, Ankit, for having me here today. Um, I think uh, we should, uh, all of us should be uh, sitting occupied with some or the other thing, learning new things in this lockdown and make the most of it, I think. So welcome to this live session of learning the basics of photography and I'm going to make the session very simple for you. 
so that uh, I'm not going to use any techie terms like high techie terms uh, so that you don't end up googling later what did she talk about or DM me about oh what 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 was that point. So any uh, any questions during the session, you can always uh, DM us or uh, get in touch with me on my Instagram. Uh, I think uh, Ankit will give you, give out my uh, Instagram ID to you. It's Amy Lenstrick uh, underscore official on Instagram and Amruta Karni Photography on Facebook. That's my page. So any doubts after this session, you can always get in touch with, with me or in the comment section of our live video. So let's begin with the e-learning. I think e-learning is the future, right? Uh, most of us are going to do that looking at the situation. So yes, so let's begin with that. So what do you need for basic shooting? You need a camera, you need a tripod, and uh, OK, the, talking about the cameras, uh, there are two categories. There's a pro category, and there's a, a mature level category. So uh, in the pro, we can talk about uh, the DSLRs, and in the mature, you can use mobile phones or uh, the point and shoots. So I'm considering today, most of us uh, watching uh, the show are having uh, SLR cameras. If you don't own an SLR camera right now, I won't really suggest you to invest in an SLR because I think you should move on to the new technology that is the mirrorless cameras. That's the future, that's the current uh, current market uh, technology what we have right now. So when you have a lighter camera, when you have a lighter technology, why buy the SLR and go around with those heavy things around. So yes, so starting with your cameras, uh, we need to uh, understand the basics like uh, what, what what kind of exposure to uh, set for the cameras. So for that, you need to understand uh, three things, the aperture, the ISO, and the shutter speed. Uh, before that, before that, uh, let me tell you, whenever you turn on your camera, make sure you're, you're shooting on draw. So first thing, go onto your camera and uh, set your uh, image settings to draw. It's, it always helps you to shoot on draw because it uh, gives you the uh, complete control on your uh, image. So when you shoot on RAW, your camera records every detail of what you can work on the image later in an editing software. So when you happen to shoot two bright pictures or pictures that have lesser light, lesser exposed pictures, you can always correct that later in Photoshop or any similar software for that matter. If you are a beginner, you can always work with a, an easier software like the Adobe Lightroom. That helps you uh, with a lot of controls then and there like you have the image in front of you and on your right is all the exposure controls and everything like everything you need to tweak on your image everything is available on the right hand side so yes so when you happen to shoot two bright pictures or two uh, dark pictures you can always uh, edit those pictures the only downside of uh, raw pictures is that a very heavy file size like if you are using a 26 megapixel camera a uh, dslr or a mirrorless camera uh, you get very heavy files like one file can uh, almost go to around a 50 or, or a 60 MB so for that you need to have a lot of uh, storage backup like the hard disks or your SSDs so uh, yes so point number one is uh, shooting always shooting on raw no shooting JPEGs from now on whoever shooting on uh, JPEGs you must have realized that you get very saturated colors. You cannot edit the image over a, over an extent. So yes, RAW is our savior. Let's now move to uh, understanding exposure. Um, it's called the exposure triangle. ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. These are the three things that are included in the exposure triangle. I will help you out understanding the aperture now. So the aperture is the opening of the lens that controls how much light it gets through your lens to the camera sensor, as well as, as it comes. Uh, it uh, consists of it. Uh, it is the depth of field. Depth of field uh, refers to the area surrounding the focal point of the image, which remains sharp. For example, you're shooting a person, and the background is blurred. What does how how is it controlled? is because of the aperture so wider the aperture you will get uh, more light into it the opening will be larger 
and you'll get more light into it and the background goes blur so uh, if you're shooting uh, on a 3.5 uh, you will get a blurred background and the person will be or the or whatever the subject will be that will be in focus for a narrow aperture anything beyond uh, say uh, anything for the matter that matter say uh, f f16 we are shooting at so these kind of apertures are needed when we are shooting uh, landscapes or we are shooting a group of people where you need to focus a lot of things uh, in uh, where you need to shoot have lot of uh, things in focus uh, for example i'm shooting a large group of people say about 10 people are standing in a row or maybe a little uh, away from each other at uh, half half feet distance from each other if i focus one person and my aperture is at 3.5 the person at the back is going to go out of focus so that's when uh, uh, narrow apertures help you so whenever uh, remember whenever you're shooting large groups always have your apertures beyond 11 beyond 13 or the best is 16 if you have good light coming in now uh, we'll understand what is iso ISO controls the camera sensitivity of the light. A low ISO setting means the camera will will be less sensitive to the light, while a higher ISO means it is more sensitive to the light. The quality of images decreases as you increase the ISO. But then, if you uh, have don't have an option, you are shooting in a uh, lesser like uh, a dark uh, surrounding, then you definitely need to shoot up your ISO. but then if you start shooting at higher iso say you go beyond 500 or uh, 800 in a basic slr or a basic uh, camera then you start seeing grains in the shot those grains are uh, at times colored colored dots start coming into your pictures those are noise that's called noise so ideally if you're shooting in a well lit place it is always always uh, advised to shoot anywhere between 100 to 200 or a 400 max beyond that just avoid uh, uh, shooting if, if that is only if you're using a basic dslr if you're using a advanced uh, slr which is uh, above a lakh or so uh, these days you get the light sensitivity of the sensors is quite nice and uh, it doesn't give you too much iso uh, too much noise in that so yes uh, in low light situations such as indoors or at night you have to boost up the uh, iso to about to anything about 400 800 or uh, if you're shooting in the dark in uh, in outdoors you might as well have to boost up your iso to Uh, 5000 or something but then when you process the image you look at it on your computer screens you will notice that there are a lot of greens happening on your image and it is slightly difficult to correct it can be corrected but it is slightly difficult to correct um on the computers because as you go to um, reduce the noise you you will find that the image sharp sharpness goes down if you really want an image which has which needs uh, sharp things you you need to use uh, maybe you will need, need to tweak with your uh, uh, apertures where you can uh, allow more light to pass in and then you can uh, play with a lesser iso um let's understand shutter speed now so shutter speed controls how the shutter stays how much time the shutter uh, stays open for the light to pass through your lens to onto the uh image sensor so longer the shutter stays open the more light gets in through the camera camera sensor so if you uh if you are keeping the shutter open for say 2 seconds so the the image will be brighter depending on what aperture you are shooting at if you're shooting at uh, uh at a, a higher shot shutter speed say 1 125th of a second then lesser light is going to uh less light is going to pass through the lens to on to your uh, sensors uh when you want to freeze an action shutter speed is the uh, uh is your savior like you need to boost up your shutter speed if you want to freeze an action like a person jumping into the air you have to shoot it at anything beyond 1 200 of a second so that uh, you you capture it well in the air if you shoot him anything be, below uh 160th of a second there are chances that you will get the 
person there and you get the trails of it or you get trails of the entire motion of his him jumping in the air so um yes yeah, so advisable is shoot anything we on 1 to 1 1 to 100th of a second or 1 uh, 500th of a second also if you shooting anything below 1 uh, 60th of shutter speed uh, 1 60th of the second uh, yeah 1 60th second so i would advise you to use a tripod for all all the shots because um, your hand your hand should be really steady if you want to go below that but most of the times you will end up with blurred shots you will end up with so uh, shaky shots and then you cannot correct them later in uh, photoshop or anywhere so yes so uh, when you're using longer shutter speeds you have to use a tripod or maybe if you don't have a tripod just try it with some some good base where you uh where you get a stable uh, base to, to your camera but then usually i think you should uh, use a tripod even um we can we can say when you want to shoot trails or long shutter speeds when you use them you can uh, get interesting uh, effects so for example if you shooting a dance uh, a dance party you can use longer shutter speed so that you can have the person in a little bit in motion and then you have the trails of uh, that person going around in the image that creates very interesting images you should try that and you should try that in low light that that gives um, great great effects now let's understand the white balance so yeah so most of the, most of the people have to ask me what does the white balance do so as it suggests as the name suggests white balance balance is the color temperature in your image for example if you're shooting in daylight and you uh, put your white balance of your camera on a fluorescent that is a tube light image that you have on your uh, uh, white balance settings it will turn your the image will turn uh, on the blue side uh, on the cooler side because um, the camera uh, is right now fooled by you that you are shooting in a much uh, cooler environment sorry a warmer environment and it needs to color correct it to a cooler thing so when you are shooting in uh, whichever uh, light setting you are shoot, shooting in if you are shooting in a indoor setting where you have yellow bulbs all around you have to set the uh, white balance to incandescent that is the bulb uh, icon that you have so that it corrects your uh, image uh, reduces the yellow and brings out the true tones into your uh, image so to get the true tones in you into your image you need to white balance your picture every time you shoot so if you're shooting one image in uh, one setting and then uh, you go on to another setting another uh, environment and then the, then you're shooting on a fluorescent then uh, your colors are going for a toss so um so how does the white balance uh, actually work i'll tell you so if i'm shooting an image in uh, where the lights are cool it's uh, the uh, the light is the light throwing out is blue so the opposite of blue is yellow so yellow um, it will it will help you add the opposite color to the image and it will balance your whites so whenever you are shooting any image you need to see the true colors right uh, you cannot uh, if you are shooting a tomato you need to sh see the tomato as red as possible and not uh, a magenta color or a green color so that's what is white balance doing uh, to your uh, image it just color, color corrects the entire thing in camera and later you can uh, process it uh, in lightroom or uh, photoshop whenever however you want it So yes, make sure every time you're shooting, you check your white balance, and then uh, you're shooting. So some cameras also have this setting of uh, preset, white balance preset. So there, uh, when we do it professionally, like when we're shooting advertising campaigns or something, when you need to see the exact color, for example, I'm wearing this color shirt, this, this olive color shirt. I need to get the exact olive color in the post, uh, like in uh, in the print. or maybe on the uh, screen also i need to see the exact uh, olive color so that time we use a gray card a gray card is held in front of the subject and there we uh, white balance the subject so gray is a neutral so that helps you to uh, color correct the entire 
frame like uh, it will help me help me to understand what color is my skin am i brown am i more on the pink side or am i on a on a darker side or is my outfit white or gray um so all the controversies you've been seeing on uh, google is it's all the uh, game of light if you see it's all the game of uh, uh white balance if you saw those images which color did you do you see this this images is it blue is it uh, purple or is it uh, yellow it's all because of the light which we use and all, all because of the white balance so i hope uh, the basics are getting uh, like uh, the basics are clear by now these are the camera settings now uh, we will move on to oh yes let's talk about the uh, memory cards which are to be used that's very important uh, as we begin photography so a lot of people uh, tell me that uh, 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 when i shoot a uh, shoot an image uh, it takes a lot of time to process and i can i cannot see it quickly as i shoot on the lcd screen lcd screen so uh, help me with that so when you using a memory card make sure you use a good company or a good brand and you use anything that's about 95 mbps and then ultra uh, ultra speed cards which are you can go for sandisk you can go for lexa uh, these are very good brands i think i personally prefer sandisk a lot i've been using that for the past i think 12 13 years and uh, yes so if you're shooting photos you have to use anything beyond 95 mbps and if you're shooting or uh, videos then definitely anything about 120 128 mbps is great enough so yes that's about the memory cards um let's go on to the rules of composition okay so uh when you compose a shot you most of the times when you, as a beginner you won't understand how to compose a shot there are times when we are shooting a landscape or we just tend to miss out the composition and then when you see it on the camera uh, on your red cd screens then you say oh that's not how how i wanted my shot to be so uh, first thing is you can turn on your grids the uh, uh, the image grids which you have the on your cameras on your uh, that's called the rule of thirds so you have this option of having grids on on your uh, cameras to so turn that on if you see that there there are two vertical lines there are two horizontal lines that are passing through the image and uh, that divides the entire image into uh, nine boxes so when you uh, compose any image so this rule applies to all kinds of photography be it your portrait be it your uh, landscape or any any subject for that matter you have to uh, follow this rule of composition so imagine a grid drawn on your image if you want to study images i'll help you how how to do that any image you take uh, draw a grid over it divide it into eight uh, sorry nine equal boxes and the points where your uh, lines intersect like the center box all the corners of it you can place your subject anywhere over there so those are the golden points which which we call it and uh, uh, that that will help you compose a great shot so when you are shooting a landscape uh, try dividing the landscape into two halves you can always have uh, your horizon on the uh, upper upper horizontal line or the lower horizontal line so uh, or or you can have an object placed on the left left vertical line or the right vertical line so that helps you to create a balance on your image if you divide it into a symmetrical or uh, that is equal halves if you're shooting a landscape and divide it into equal halves there will be times you cannot really make out if the image is shot which way which is not which is south you, you cannot uh, actually uh, understand that so uh, yes so follow the rules of composition it is called uh, it is called the rule of thirds so when you are using the rule of thirds rather than positioning your uh, uh, subject or the important elements of the scene at the center of the photo you can place them along one of the lines one of the four lines or at the points where the lines intersect as i said on the center of the box any anywhere on the ends of the uh, square so some cameras do have the grid option open or if you still uh, uh, learning and if your camera doesn't have that you can always 
create a um, create a rule of thirds uh, this thing um, um you can take a gateway paper or a tracing paper draw a box on it and while you're learning you can always check after you shoot that if you're if you're right or not but i think most of the cameras do have that option right now so i think it should be a problem now so yes so rules of composition uh, there are a lot of uh, other things in the rules of composition maybe we can get onto it in the next session or maybe if you're doing any more sessions uh with you one to one if you want to learn that you can always come back to me and uh, you can dm me on my instagram and i can always help you out with these so there are a lot of things that need to be taken care of while you're composing an image um a lot of things with the colors how to place colors in the frame there are a lot of things so yes so uh, let's try to solve those also in case there's anything uh, till now just uh, write into the comment box and we'll answer that um let's move on to the lens part of it about the lenses like uh, people ask me what kind of lens should i buy i have an slr but i don't understand what lens to buy so uh, it depends so i the first thing i ask them is it depends on what you want to shoot are you, are you a landscape shooter or you are a portrait lover or you want to get into nature photography or wildlife photography completely depends on what you want to shoot or are you just a person who wants to shoot everything so if you're shooting everything you need to have the entire range of lenses for your uh, shooting so yes so uh, you have lenses uh, from 8 mm to 1600 mm for different kinds of photography for uh, landscape and architecture we can use anywhere between 8 mm to 50 mm because you want the shots to be wide you, you want to show the place to be as big as possible so uh, the best lens i think the best possible lenses you can use is anywhere between 8 mm to 35 mm mm for uh, your uh, landscape and architectures beyond that if you want to cover anything any details you can go from 35 to 50 for your architecture and landscape shots it completely depends on how much area you want to cover uh, beyond 35 it gets a little selective for the landscapes and architect architecture shots so yes so 8 mm to 50 mm is for architecture and landscapes for portraits ideally i would say anywhere between 35 to 200 mm if you if you are a fan of pictures where you see the backgrounds are blurred and uh, the subject is in focus then you have to invest in lenses which offer a wider aperture like anything like a 1.2 or 1.4 1.8 these these are the lenses you can uh, ideally have for your portraits and uh, go for a 50 mm go for a 35 mm go for a uh, 85 mm then you have 100 mm 105 these are the lenses you can always use for portraits and they, those give you amazing results because they are made for that like uh, 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 th these lenses are the ones which i'm telling uh, which has 1.4 aperture 1.8 aperture these will give you nice blurred backgrounds so i think that's that's everybody's concern these days like people come to me oh i want a picture with a blurred background so yes this is all your all your uh, questions so um products about products if you ask me which lenses to use we can uh, shoot anywhere from 50 mm to 200 mm depending on the requirement uh if you want to shoot a very close up uh, a, a tight close up of a particular product for example i'm shooting dates i need to show the details of the dates i need to show its skin i need to show its every detail like uh, the color has to be nice and crisp so that's when i use a macro lens i i can use a 105 mm i can use a 100 mm for that so whenever you're shooting products and you're shooting food make sure that you have a macro lens because you want to see the minutest details of it so um yes and uh, it helps you to close uh, focus really close like if if i want to shoot a date as small as this uh, as a, as as much as your finger or as short as your thumb i need to go close to it so that i get the maximum coverage in my frame and i can focus it well so macro lenses help you to focus anywhere as close as 1 feet half a feet anywhere so your macro lenses also Uh, help you to get as close as possible beyond that if you want to shoot 
jewelry, you have to uh, have the macro, uh, sorry, the micro mode on it, so that you can get uh, more closer to the to the subject. Like uh, if you're shooting a ring or you're shooting a shooting earrings, you need to see the minutest details, the diamonds, the or the stones or the studs uh, in your uh, jewelry, so that you uh, portray it well to the viewer. That what kind of a color it has, what kind of texture it has. So that's when you need macro and micro lenses. Um, for, uh, yeah, so, uh, sorry, I missed out a point uh, uh, in uh, landscape and architecture photography. When you're using um, a wide angle lens, make sure that you're shooting anywhere between uh, 16, like anywhere beyond 13 or anywhere beyond 16 f stop, because you want to show everything in focus for that, right? When you're shooting a, a large mall, you need to show everything in focus. You cannot have just the foreground in focus and the background in uh, out of focus where you cannot see anything. So yes, so you need to definitely uh, work on uh, wider, sorry, uh, narrower apertures while you're shooting uh, architecture and landscapes. Even on the um, uh, landscapes, if you're shooting a sunset, you need to show the entire thing. Like if you if you are on a beach and shooting a shooting a uh, sunset, you need to show the sand in the front in focus. You need to show the water in focus. And you also need to focus on the sun at the same time. And everything needs to be sharp from right from the uh, this end to the uh, top end of the shot. So for that, you need to um, uh, shoot at anywhere beyond f16 to anything what your uh, camera or uh, your lens offers up to like f32 or something. So yes, let's now understand the focus modes. So yes, I think focus modes is uh, something people really don't touch uh, till uh, you really understand your DSLRs. So there are auto, two, two kinds of auto modes, uh, auto focus modes on the uh, camera. One is AFS and A, uh, one is AFC. So AFS is the single focus. That is one shot single focus. That is uh, uh, that's the simplest form of uh, autofocus. So in general, when you uh, press the shutter release button halfway, uh, your lens automatically focuses onto the uh, onto the subject, which it quickly picks up. So uh, it uh, once the once the focus is locked, once the, once you have the object in focus. The camera will lock the focus onto the subject which you've placed and the active uh, autofocus sensor. So press the shutter button the rest of the way to the uh, image. So uh, if you want to do it the simplest way possible, single focus is the uh, key to, to your uh, question. And uh, if you want to uh, shoot something which is uh, um, which is a moving, uh, which is a moving uh, this thing, a moving object. Then you have continuous focus. So continuous focus is where the camera's electronic brain starts to uh, do something pretty cool things to help you uh, keep your subject in focus. Uh, for example, if you're shooting a, a baby which is moving continuously, a kid which is moving continuously, so you need to. Uh, uh, the, the camera needs to track your subject continuously. So when you have the AFC or the AI servo mode on on your uh, on your uh, camera, the camera automatically tracks the subject which is moving in the frame and it locks the focus over there. So wherever, wherever the subject is moving from here to there, from left to right or top to bottom, it will always lock the focus and help you out with uh, um, maintaining the focus and you can always shoot it with efficiency. Um, now uh, we we'll talk about uh, why we need a tripod. So uh, there are a lot of people I know who are studying photography right now would not have tripods, or uh, there are a lot of people who like landscape photography but who wouldn't have uh, a tripod. Like tri having a tripod, investing in a tripod when you do photography is very very essential because you don't want to end up with any shaky shots. You really want sharp pictures when you are doing uh, um, a sunset shot or a maybe a, 
a time lapse of something if you want to shoot a nice time lapse uh, uh, when you're out on a vacation you really need a tripod so that you can always mount your camera on your uh, tripod and have that sunset for shoot for half an hour 45 minutes or an hour so uh, yes always it's always ha uh, uh, essential to have a tripod if you're shooting any any landscapes any uh, architecture if you're shooting architecture why do you need a uh, tripod in architecture it's because uh, you if you're shooting any architecture you would always have vertical lines you would always have horizontal lines passing through your uh, frame so you don't want your uh, image to look distorted so if I'm shooting straight on, I, uh, how do I know it's a straight on? If you if you carry a tripod, if you're using a tripod, then yes, you can. Uh, tripod tells you that it's a straight shot. But if I'm holding it like hand holding the shot and shooting it, you might as well tilt a little up, tilt a little down, left, right, whatever, and then your uh, entire perspective is gone for a toss. So that's where you need a tripod. Um, so yes, yeah, so in, in architecture photography, the verticals have to be vertical, the, the vertical lines have to be shown vertical properly and that's where we need the tripod. Um, also when you're shooting low light portraits or anything, anything in low light, you need to have a tripod because uh, you, again, you don't want to end up with the shots, you don't want to uh, miss out any focus or anything. So when you're shooting in uh, in low light, you can uh, also uh, keep the ISO level as minimum as possible and boost up your uh, and open your apertures as much as possible so that uh, you, you don't have to boost the shutter speed uh, to a higher this thing or a lower this thing and then you end up with the uh, blur shots. So, so yes, a tripod is essential for anything if you're shooting rivers, waterfalls. Oh yes, waterfalls. So waterfalls, you must have seen pictures where um, you have uh, these uh, soft, uh, soft trails of the water falling down. So how are these shots done? These are with the tripod. So you mount your uh, camera onto the tripod, set your frame. Um, and then uh, it's all about the shutter speed. So you have to... Uh, keep your shutter open for maybe more than 15 seconds, 20 seconds. So that's where your tripod is very essential because you cannot hand hold and do a shot for 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Like when you breathe, your shot gets blurred. So yes, so that's when you have to use a tripod. You can use it in cityscapes when you're shooting something in low light. For example, I am at Gateway of India and I have to show, shoot the entire skyline. So if I have to shoot the skyline, I need to have something which is stable and uh, I have to keep the shutter speed shutter open for a long time. So when I have to keep the shutter open for a long time, there's only minimal light passing through the camera. So I have to boost up my eyes. So I have to boost up my, uh, I have to uh, cut down on the shutter uh, speed. That is again, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever I will need to after the exposure is taken. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's where you need to have the tripod uh, when you have to shoot nice cityscapes or rivers or waterfalls. Um, even in product photography, when we're doing, when we're shooting a product, particular product, your frames, um, your shot is set, your shot is composed, and you cannot keep running with the camera here and there and adjusting your shot. And uh, uh, every time you will be having a different kind of composition human error is possible if you cannot you cannot say that oh i'll compose a shot very uh, perfectly even without a driver it doesn't happen like three centimeters two centimeters is also does also makes a huge difference in the um advertising industry if, if the shot is not perfect because uh, if we are seriously shooting something like packaging which is which needs to be very perfect you cannot move the composition, you cannot move the angle, you just cannot move your camera at all. There are times when we mark the uh, frames, we mark the tripod uh, where it is placed. 
so yes uh, i think you understand how important a tripod is so when you purchase your first tripod i think the first uh, the very important thing you need to understand is always 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 have to check the weight of the uh, tripod because it is very important you will be carrying the tripod everywhere you cannot have a tripod which is too heavy and you cannot go on a vacation with a very heavy tripod so you need to have a uh, Uh, something that that is comfortable, not too light because it won't uh, take the weight of your camera, and then it might just topple. So you need to take care of um, what kind of weight you're going for, and then what kind of things you're shooting. If you're shooting, if you're shooting landscapes, then you need to have a different kind of a head. So there are two things: there are legs and there are heads of the. tripod so if you're shooting something uh, like if you're shooting videos you need to have a tripod head which you can which can help you move the camera like right to left it, it should help help you do that when you are shooting uh, stills any anything stills like you need to tilt up and down you need to have a, a tripod head which has which is called a gear head or a ball ball head So you can Google all these things, or you can always uh, DM me about what kind of a tripod. Uh, how do I choose a tripod for my camera? Um, and I'll help you out with the good brands. And uh, you can always Google it uh, on deep deepreview.com for what, how much uh, weight your camera, how how much weight your tripod can carry, how much weight uh, uh, of the entire tripod is ideal for your camera. So these are the things you need to take care of while you um, you are looking for a tripod. But then, very essential. I I would really say and vouch for it that you need need a tripod if you want to get into photography properly. Okay, so uh, now let's get on to uh, editing pictures. Now, if you're editing, like if you're just starting off as an editor, like uh, starting off uh, in photography, you can. Always start with the uh, Lightroom. It's very simple. It's a very simple software. As I said, uh, you have the image in your center, and all the controls are to your right, and you see everything happening then and there. You can always divide the screen into left and right, before and after, to understand what is happening to your image. So the left is your um, the raw image, and to your right is what is happening to your image. And it uh, and Lightroom works so. Safely that you can whatever you do is getting saved onto the image. So there's an uh, so there's uh, all the controls are there on your right. So if you're tweaking the bright brightness, you're tweaking your exposure, you're tweaking your white balance. Everything everything gets recorded onto your uh, on your image, and you can always go back with the history uh, of of the image. You can always go back and do things over there. it's as it's it's very easy like a basic uh, editing software then you have photoshop photoshop is a little difficult to learn in the beginning but once you uh, once you're through <coughs> you'll always uh, like how much ever you learn is very little so i've been learning photoshop i think for the past 15 years and still it's like every time i uh, sit on uh, sit on uh, sit on an edit i find something new so yes so uh, a good editing software is very much needed invest in a good one if you want a uh, pro edits then uh, adobe lightroom and adobe photoshop you get their bundles on their um, uh, on their website you just have to sign in and i think uh, per month you get a package of uh, lightroom and photoshop for as low as 700 800 bucks which is pretty cheap i think uh, to to, to Use a licensed software, and if you're shooting and editing something on your mobile phone, you can always do it uh, with the Snapseed. Then you have Photoshop Express, you have Lightroom as well, and <clears throat> there are other softwares like um, I think Camera 360. But that's a very basic one that it doesn't allow you to uh, export uh, high quality images, like high resolution images. So uh, my my suggestion. on phone if you want to edit is always always so uh, snapseed so i think we've covered a lot yeah, we okay we've already passed 45 minutes this show uh, the session i think
so i think that's all from my end um, i really hope you guys enjoyed this session on basics of photography and i hope to continue to help you out with your doubts and concerns with regard to learning photography and creating great imagery and uh, if you are interested in learning more definitely you can come back to us and tell us like tell us what you want to learn about and uh, if you are watching this today please leave me a dm on my instagram that's amy lenstrick underscore official and do tell me how you found the session to be and i'll make sure to help you out more in future and uh, with that everyone great thank you so much amruta it was an amazing session we learned so much so many things that we had no idea about that is there in our cameras so thank yes you. it was very very informative i'll quickly take yeah. one or two questions that we have in the comment uh, so we have mithilesh who is asking which dslr is better for basic photography any particular model that you would like to suggest uh so mithilesh um, as i said uh, i think uh, if you really don't have a dslr right now i would definitely suggest you to go for a mirrorless technology because that is the future uh dslr are almost redundant now so i i would suggest you to go for the canon eos r or the rp right now which you can get for about anything uh, around the lakh right uh, uh you have been talking about this mirrorless technology and there is a little about little bit about that and what are the cameras or the brands and how how does that work something on that okay so uh, i think sony is the pioneer of uh, the entire system like uh, right now most of the professionals use the mirrorless technology and they are easing the game right now but then we also have a lot of uh, other brands like um, fuji we have uh, canon uh, which use this system so basically uh, the difference is that uh, the slrs have a mirror which uh, reflects the image onto the sensor and uh, that's that's what it makes it bulky so uh, in this in this cameras you directly see what is happening uh, in front of you so so that's how the system gets uh, smaller and it's very handy to carry as well it's a lighter system and it's very efficient more than the dslrs dslrs is i think a 20 year old technology and uh, mirrorless is just picking up right now so i can definitely vouch for the mirrorless technology great uh we also have kuda she is asking how can we take amazing pictures using a normal phone camera any suggestions on that a lot of us use phones yes and all these phones today have so many you know 13 14 20 30 megapixels so right right how do we use them like we have to have 7 megapixel phone cameras as well so yeah so the key to shooting good uh, uh, good pictures on a phone is find very good light don't shoot in any colored lights like yellows and blues and greens shoot uh, shoot near the windows shoot in daylight shoot in nice uh, well lit places and you will get your shots very right so again there is a lot of study again it goes uh, with regards to your angles and your uh, uh, compositions and everything but yes the key is finding great light great light all right uh, then we had siddharth who is saying a hi to you so hi siddharth hi uh, thanks for joining and then we also had piyush tanpure he says thank you so much these are some very very good tips thank you piyush for joining today we had parminder sani with us uh, he is saying parminder and we also had manoj morya he saying thank you so much for this live session great to see you manoj we also had mr kumar who says please show live screen when you are explaining so sure kumar next time we'll try to also have maybe a presentation or live screen along with the this yes right uh, right so the last thing uh, for my personal for my personal, i love clicking the skies okay i love clicking skies and especially uh, the night skies the sunset and after that mm -hmm. right i also try and clicking moon at time so i've seen some of my friends use their cameras and dslrs to click some amazing pictures of moon okay uh, wait any uh, but when i try and do that it is in the auto mode it just doesn't come if i'm okay. zooming too much it is always blurred if i am not zooming it's i cannot understand anything what is there so what are the particular settings you would suggest me to use them especially while i'm clicking in the night the moon so first question is <laughs> Sorry. 
Do you use a tripod for no. the okay, I don't so have a tripod. I don't have a tripod. Do you have to invest in very in the beginning because uh as i said no light photography cannot be done without a good uh, tripod so invest in a basic one i'll help i'll definitely help you out with which one to go for so once your uh, camera is on to the your tripod you can take the exposure exactly of the uh, moon uh use a lens any anything beyond i think 300 to 600 is a good uh, one to shoot the moon okay and uh, yeah i'm focus on the moon that's it, like uh, that's it. Right now, I have I think uh, EFS with eighteen and fifty-five mm. That's I think is not definitely. Have a closer lens, like a telephoto lens for your uh, for your requirement. So as I said, right. uh, um, uh, anything like any nature or any uh, astrophotography, you can always go for a lens beyond three hundred mm to anywhere till six hundred mm, sixteen hundred mm is a good thing to shoot such things. Great. So thank you so much, Amrita. We don't have any other specific questions, but anyone who wants to ask any questions, you can always connect with Amrita on her Instagram handle, that is Ami Lens Chick A M I L E N S C H I C underscore official. It's on your screens as well. Uh, please visit her page. I I saw the page. There are some amazing pictures, and I will be in fact DMing her later on to ask some very specific questions about certain very specific pictures that I saw. uh with food and all that i am a very big foodie so i love eating food as well i am among those people who go in the restaurant and eat food so yes it was an amazing uh, session thank you so much amruta and uh, we'll connect again soon and to all the audience uh, amruta also takes one on one live classes so anyone who is interested in joining her classes please dm her you can also leave a message to us and we'll connect together so yes the classes are on uh multiple sessions she, te she teaches about food photography she teaches about lifestyle photography and so much more and manoj says amazing work on her page thank you he has been following you for sure great so thank you so much amruta we'll call it a show here and we'll connect again soon thank you so much for being a part and sharing us so many amazing things thank you so much anku thank you to you and radhika for getting me here today i'm so glad i was here and great audience there thanks a lot all the honor is all ours thank you so much and we'll see you soon okay. please take okay. care okay. please stay safe yes stay safe everyone bye bye all right guys that was an amazing amazing session with amruta we'll come back with another episode of learning live very soon on thursday and learn some more tricks and tips from someone some other professional in the industry till then please take care and do not follow to come back on the page at 4:30 where we will have the next episode of where it goes this time we are coming with the priya ghilani and we'll be talking about the cosmetic industry and some skin care tips at 4:30 so stay here come back and we'll join you then in where it goes till then thank you so much take care goodbye